Hair down time. This is an Xbox 360, of course. Uh, and inside it, there's going to be a graphics processor, which I bet it's going to be fascinating to look at. Let's uh, crack the case off and uh, take a look at what we can find. Um, the first thing, of course, uh, with the case removed, you can see the two big heat sinks uh, on the left there, the one for the uh, GPU, uh, the one on the right, of course, for the uh, CPU. Uh, the uh, heat sinks are huge, and that's the first indication that there's probably a pretty massive bit of silicon sitting under them. Uh, they're about 500 times the volumetric uh, size of the actual die. Let's uh, take those off uh, and take a look at the circuit board going straight down here. You can see all the components. Uh, the ones of real note, uh, the really big bits of silicon, uh, are the CPU and uh, GPU. Uh, not a big surprise. Uh, if we uh, zoom in, though, let's take a look at the uh, GPU, of course, because that's what this video is about. Uh, we quickly get a sense that there's some really heavy-duty processing power uh, on this chip. Uh, and you can sort of tell that uh, the chip here, of course, in the center, uh, it has actually two parts on the substrate. There's actual GPU chip, and then just to the north of it uh, is the uh, frame buffer. They uh, bond it onto the same substrate to keep the traces uh, probably well under a centimeter. That tells me that's probably an extremely fast interface. Uh, zooming out to the left and the bottom there, you can see uh, uh, four DRAMs. And the trace routing looks very serpentine, and that's because they're trying to do something called... Uh, length matching. Basically all the traces have to have uh, the exact same length, uh, probably to within about plus or minus 0.1 millimeters, uh, and that's done to achieve uh, signal integrity and no skewing between them. Another good sign that we're looking at a pretty fast interface. Uh, going on to the uh, right side, we can see the uh, GPU communicating to the CPU. Uh, those pairs of uh, conductors are called differential uh, pairs, and they run quite quickly well above a gigabit per second, I suspect, on each of the links. So another good indication there's a massive amount of data being moved between the uh, GPU and CPU. So everything on this board is clearly indicating this uh, GPU uh, has some tremendous interfaces on it to it in terms of bandwidth. Not a big surprise, of course, because uh, that's its role. It moves uh, data at extremely fast rates. Let's uh, pop the chip off its substrate and take a look at the die. So here we have the two silicon dies. They've been uh, de-encapsulated or removed from that substrate. They're also facing upside down from the way that we were looking at them in the previous pictures. The pencil there is for reference, gives you some good idea the scale of these. These are huge. These are absolutely massive dies. Um, it gives you another good visual indication. You're looking at some tremendous compute power. Let's uh, see, uh, the left there is the frame buffer, the right, the uh, square chip, of course, is the actual GPU and the heart, really, of the Xbox. So let's uh, take a photograph looking straight down. Now, the colors are pretty muted, and that's because at the very top layer of this chip, uh, they've put a metallization so they can connect solder balls from the silicon chip down to the uh, substrate. And uh, let me just zoom in a little bit. You can sort of see the connection points there. And... Uh, this, of course, obscures a lot of the real details, and you have to do something called a uh, metal strip, or you basically need to take the top metal off the chip. If you do it, uh, you get an absolutely gorgeous picture. Uh, and here it is. Here is the uh, heart of the Xbox, the 360. We're looking at all the polysilicon. Uh, the web tells me there's a close to a quarter billion transistors sitting here, if you can imagine. Um, it's a tremendously complicated part. Let's uh, see if we can sort down the major functions, at least. Well, let's see. Well, the first reason why it's colorful is uh, I'm actually illuminating the chip with a really bright light source and it's bouncing off of it. And the transistors are spaced so closely to each other, it actually acts like a diffraction grating, so you can get these uh, wonderful rainbow patterns uh, if you put the light just right. Uh, on the left-hand side there, uh, those are the Sirdeses. Those are the ones that go back to the uh, CPU chip, the uh, high speed. Let's just insert another picture a little more zoomed in. Uh, what happens those get laid out by hand because they are uh, very high speed indeed and uh, they're very carefully selected uh, cells and then they're dropped down in, in what's known as a macro mode they're not just a sea of gates uh, zooming back out uh, we can see that there's uh, two DRAM buses sitting on the chip remember the chip's now upside down from how we were seeing it so it all gets reversed uh, because this chip flips down gets started onto the board um, those are the DRAMs that were on the circuit board uh, they're quote unquote low speed uh, probably you know, 800 megahertz in this era. Uh, on the top there is the uh, IOs that go to the frame buffer. That was the uh, DRAM that was local to the actual substrate, so a unique bus there. Um, all the bits inside those colorful rectangles, that's uh, memory chips, uh, the sort of purple hazy area, uh, that's known as the sea of gates. Um, with a quarter billion transistors, uh, there's like hundreds of thousands of transistors in some of those squares, so uh, there is a lot going on in this chip.
Okay, I've changed photographs here. This one looks a little uh, plainer. That's because I'm illuminating it uh, basically straight down, trying to actually avoid uh, the uh, diffraction patterns. Uh, it's also a very different photograph in that it's stitched from many smaller photographs. Uh, one real challenge of photographing semiconductors is there's so many transistors. Uh, my camera's 18 megapixels, but when you're trying to photograph a quarter billion transistors, uh, it becomes quite tricky. As you zoom in, you, of course, would lose that resolution. Uh, let's zoom into this photograph. Uh, it's over 300 megabytes in size, and uh, we can quickly see that uh, although there's fairly good detail down to the macro level, uh, it quickly loses resolution. Um, so, real fundamental problem when you try to photograph something so fine. Uh, just uh, scanning over here to some of that uh, gray or purple area, uh, that's the sea of gates basically. We're looking at uh, hundreds of thousands of gates and uh, you need to get to a couple thousand X before you can actually see these uh, structures. Uh, zooming out a little bit though, we can sort of see that uh, some of the structures of those memories gives us a hint of what we're looking at. The web says that there's uh, 48 floating point vector units on here uh, for shading. And if you look at this portion of the chip here, you can sort of see a very repeated pattern going on with the memory. So uh, I would suspect that's where the shaders live on this uh, product. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to toss this up on my blog if I can. I don't know if it would allow me uh, such a large file to be uploaded. But uh, if you want to take a look at a Xbox 360, uh, it is a really fascinating bit of silicon. Let's finish this video with a nice flyby of this circuit board. It's actually really quite gorgeous. Um, it uh, has a really nice mixture of uh, really complicated components and some actually quite nice discretes, which gives a nice dramatic view. And uh, I think I might be revisiting this Xbox 360 circuit board. There are a lot of neat engineering things going on here. Mm -hmm.